I am Carolina Ankar. I am very passionate and very childish, <laughs> but still very mature. Oh God. I feel like I have a lot of passions. It's hard to kind of like pinpoint something that's like super big. I mean, as a dancer, I feel like dance is kind of just the biggest passion I have. It's kind of what my life revolves around. If I'm speaking kind of from like recent events, I guess what I'm most passionate about at the moment is I just started my own clothing brand called Scrolling Society. And it just, it means a lot, especially now in this time where like social media and the internet also has an effect on our mental health um, and us as individuals and kind of like how we identify ourselves, you know, with the world. Sometimes like it would take a turn of where I'm kind of influenced by what other people are doing. And I'm like, well, maybe I like, I need to be doing more of that or I need to be focusing on what my future is going to be like that person is or I need to look like this I need to eat this there was a point where it was just like really taking over and I like I was like I need to just like put my phone away like log off of everything and just focus on like the people around me it was like that moment for me to like figure myself out and realize that I don't really need that platform to like find self-fulfillment like as long as it's in me and the people around me, like, that's fine. Social media is there for, like, fun, whatever you can share what you want. But it's not all that it, you know, that we need. It's not the main thing. So I was like, how can I do, how can I put this all together? So I was like, I'm going to put it on a sweater. You know, the first sweater that I launched was kind of, like, the big, like, this is, this is what social media is. Um, this is the platform that we're sharing so much of our lives on and like it's not always great like it can have such a negative impact on so many people especially the younger generation who like this is their life they rely on so many like compliments and the likes how many followers followers they have who's looking at their snapchat none of that matters you know Put all that stuff away, focus on what's in front of you, because at the end of the day, that's what's going to be there. Your phone, social media, it's not. So I think kind of branching social media and like mental health and putting it together into this like one thing that I can kind of give to everybody else is like really cool. And I think that's kind of like the main passion right now. There's many passions, <laughs> but this is the main one. <laughs> And you're wearing school exercise right now. I am. <laughs> I'd like to spin around and show you. <laughs> oh my god. You're real. You questions. <laughs> Art to me is, I want to say it's like freedom. There's no like, there's no right or wrong ever with art, especially if you're the one creating it. I feel like there's a lot of people who create things for the outer world to like get a reaction. And then there's like, other people who kind of create for themselves and just if people happen to like it they like it if people don't who cares like you did it for you um so for me like art encompasses just like self-expression and not not identifying with like what is wrong or right there is no wrong or right it's just what you want to make i think at the end of the day everything I create is kind of just like a chunk of me like I feel like anything that I ever do it's like literally just like picking off a piece of my body and just like putting it in there <laughs> it sounds like some weird horror movie but like metaphorically let's say <laughs> I feel like I put a lot of my brain and like my heart into things and sometimes it doesn't turn out the way I want it to, which is fine. But I feel like as long as I know that what I'm giving to others is gonna impact them, like, just on, like, the tiniest bit, that's kind of, like, enough. I think it's important to, like, share your, like, creativity and to share, like, what you want to put out there with others only because... If not, it's almost kind of, I don't want to say it's like a waste, but 
if nobody else is going to experience it with you, I feel like it, it's not going to get the, like, the recognition that it deserves. Oh, God. This is a hard question. Um, <laughs> because I am, I am proud of a lot of things that I've done. I think it's taken time for me to realize that I'm proud of a lot of things that I've done. Because for a long time after I created something, I'm kind of just like not proud of it. <laughs> it's, I think it has to do a lot with the whole like, not self-loathing, but kind of just like feeling like nothing I do is like enough. At the end of the day, I am very proud of a lot of things. It's hard to think right now of like something I'm super proud of. If anything, all I can super think about proud. is like my sister. And like, obviously I didn't create her, <laughs> like, but um, I feel like she has kind of seen me kind of like grow as a person. And from that, not saying that I'm like such a great <laughs> influence, um, but in a way I feel like I, I have been, you know, like I've seen her kind of just like bloom into this like beautiful, wonderful human being that I just like never want to be apart from. So I guess just the fact that I'm proud of her makes me proud of, I guess, what I've been doing with my life. Cause I don't know, again, it's just like, I feel like I'm always like, oh, nothing I do is good enough. People don't care. Um, and she's always been like, the one who's always like, you got this, you can do this, like, you're great. Like, doesn't matter what other people think. Like, as long as you're proud and you're happy, you know? Why are you the one giving me advice? <laughs> I'm the older sister. Um, but I guess it hasn't been up until she left for school that I was like, oh my God, like we've always had this like super deep like connection with each other. Like everyone thinks we're twins. We're not. <laughs> um, but I, I guess that kind of goes to show that like our relationship is like that strong. Yeah. She's just, a really cool sister. <laughs> Shout out to you. Celine. Shout out to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess my ability to talk to people. I've always kind of struggled with not like making friends, but just approaching people in general and like I guess now I've definitely been more open to just like letting people in like and not judging right away. Um, I feel like now that I've grown as a person and I kind of like know where I stand with like what I believe and who I want in like my not circle but like not as tight of a circle I know. I, I think I'm a little bit more open two people and then I guess that in turn allows them to see who I really am. Um, so I think definitely my ability to connect with people and and to see them for who they are and to have them see me for who I am is just like just beautiful in general. I think we're scared to share our emotions in general. I think the world has kind of painted this picture of like if you show that you're sad if you show that you're kind of like open to like hurt and like madness and just like all the things that we should be and are allowed to feel like that puts people off so much i know like in the beginning kind of wrapping this into dance like i was so scared to just freestyle. Like we'd get in a circle. I remember the first time I experienced like freestyle wasn't even in like a technique class, like a contemporary class or anything. It was in the first time I took a hip hop class. And the last thing we did at the end of class, my teacher was like, all right, get in a circle. We're freestyling and everybody was clapping. And I literally stood there and I was like, I'm not moving. Like I'm not getting in the middle of the circle and having everybody stare at me and like, I'm not doing it. After a while, I guess I, you know, started taking more classes and took like my first improv class and I was like, whoa, like this isn't about 
you know, dance itself. Like this is, this is about us as humans and like what we feel. And um, I witnessed so many people kind of just like removing everything that was around them out of their mind, everything. And just, it was like their soul was literally out and just like moving around them. Like, I feel like I saw their souls just there. You know what I mean? And that was the first time that I ever experienced like vulnerability with dance. And I feel like ever since that, I've been trying to bring vulnerability in with just like life in general. Because I feel like it's just, it's hard for so many people to, to open up and say like, I'm sad or just to cry. I don't know why, like, it's like my favorite thing because it's like the only way that I know that I will release everything that I'm feeling without saying a word. People are just scared to be vulnerable because they're afraid of, I guess, what other people are going to say or think of them. And at the end of the day, like, vulnerability does not have any outside sources attached to it. Like, that should not be the reason why you're not, you know, allowed to, you know, be sad, be angry, be, you know, whatever. I think it's honestly, like, one of the most beautiful things about human beings is the fact that we're actually able to just share all these emotions that we have, especially if you find, you know, a group of people that you can just, like, literally ball your eyes in front of, and they're just... The, the fact that you know that they're not there to judge you or to talk you down or to tell you that your feelings are invalid or that, you know, whatever you're feeling is wrong or you shouldn't feel this way over this certain situation. Like, they're your feel Whatever you're feeling, that's what you're feeling. Like, you know what I mean? You can't kind of fight that. Um, so I feel like the more vulnerable that we are with ourselves and with people that we're close with, um, I feel like it kind of helps us just grow as, as humans. It helps us be more empathetic and just knowing that a presence is there to kind of have your back and, and just like watch over you is the best ever. I think in general, just the fact that like, like we end at some point, it's just like, it's inevitable, you know? I feel like it's just weird to think that like, people just go. I think tying into that, what makes being a human like great and amazing is the fact that we we get to live for, for however long we do. And like whatever we choose to do with that life is like, as long as you are doing good and what you're doing is fulfilling, it's just sometimes crazy like to think like, we're not here for that long honestly. I mean, especially now, I mean, you never know, like, AI is coming in, like, <laughs> so who knows? Like, yeah, I think the fact that we end is crazy, but the fact that we actually do get to live is amazing. This is going to be so random, but <laughs> I always, I don't know why, I associate, like, living and like feel like it's like the one few like one of the few times where I actually feel my body is like alive so random but it's whenever I go to Six Flags <laughs> and I sit in the front row of every ride my sister and I started this tradition that anytime we go to Six Flags we sit in the front of every ride and as soon as you know we go down we have to keep our arms up so it's like we're free falling and I don't know why but it's like one of the few times where I feel like I am on top of the world. I mean obviously it's the adrenaline, you know what I mean? But falling, I feel so like, I'm like this is what living is. This is what it means to like be alive, is to feel like the most extreme feeling. Ever, like all at once like I could be crying and like spit is coming out of my mouth but I'm like screaming my brains out and, like my arms are up and I'm like next to my best friend it's like this is amazing but anytime I think about like what it feels like to be alive I just remember sitting in the front seat of a roller coaster and it's like it just takes you it's this just turned into a Six Flags <laughs>
it's just so freeing. And like, it sounds crazy to think like you're getting this from a Six Flags ride. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I think a smaller, I'm gonna start with like the smaller one. This was kind of like at a point in where I wasn't sure like what dance meant to me. I had just kind of like finished recovering from like a really bad injury and I had been wanting to go to this dance intensive for so long but I knew I couldn't afford it because it was in Texas and it was a week long and I was like how like I want to go to this so bad and I couldn't figure out how to get there because I knew that if I went my sister was going to want to go and it was like it was just like a lot of factors kind of just like keeping us from you know doing this so my mom was like do you guys want to go and me and my sister were like what like we're actually gonna go to texas this is the first time we were getting on a plane since i was like seven um and we were like oh my god like we're actually gonna do this we're gonna dance for five days straight with justin giles um and like his soul escape dance company that whole week was just the turning point like from then on i was like i need to be doing dance for however long as i'm like allowed to do like this is the thing and it was a contemporary dance intensive so like i you know i trained in ballet modern hip hop, all all the styles but i was kind of struggling to figure out like what was the one thing that i like what made me unique what made me feel special and like contemporary was like it after this and that's kind of like what helped me figure out like i want to do choreography like i didn't want to just be the dancer um which this kind of ties into like the biggest turning point for me was when i had to get knee surgery and it happened my senior year of high school and i was i was like i'm going to dance school like this was like the main thing and my senior year we were rehearsing one day and I just the simplest thing just like completely my knee just gave out and I was like that same injury had happened to me a few years before and I was able to recover it within like a week and then it happened this time and in my brain the first thing that happened was I'll be fine in a week I'm fine. I was in pain. There was no crying or anything, but like the shock of it just happening. And when it happened, I thought, oh, it's going to be, I'll be fine in a week. But I knew it was not like, I think it was just me telling myself, like, if you don't recover, you won't be able to go to your first college audition. Like it's game over. And it was, I want to say like two weeks before, like my first like dance competition and i was like i need to this is i'm fine in a week i'll be fine everyone's like you need to go to the hospital i'm like i'll be fine we had to call the ambulance because i couldn't walk went to the hospital everyone thought i had like my acl torn whatever i went to like three different doctors nobody knew what was going on and then one doctor told me like you just located your kneecap all the cartilage has been completely ripped off like you need surgery stat and i was like so what like what am i gonna do and they told me the dates that i was you know gonna have the surgery how long i was gonna be out and i turned to my mom and i was like i'm not dancing anymore and she was like you'll be fine you're dancing and i was like no like this is it for me like i i'm getting emotional oh no <laughs> uh, yeah like i thought that was the end um so then i had surgery and it took a long time to recover and I like didn't think I was gonna dance again it's kind of like a part of who I am like yeah. if it wasn't for that like I wouldn't be who I am yeah it took way too long and then it kind of just I had to reevaluate my life and like figure out like okay I'm not going to school for dance anymore so I was like I took a year off after I graduated high school and I was like I need to recover I need to figure out what I'm doing and then I got very comfortable with that year off and I was like I'm gonna take two years off and that was kind of when the whole I want to start dancing again like I need to start training and that was when I went to Texas and my life was just like this was like it was like meant to happen horrible sequence of events but in the end I 
I think it was like probably the best thing that happened for me because if not like I I honestly can't picture my life like having gone to school for four years for dance and like what kind of career would I have had after I graduated college like I have no idea but I'm glad of where I am now and I'm proud and yeah <laughs> because I've kind of put myself in these like in this like mindset of things just going horribly wrong it's almost like I'm self-sabotaging myself and it's like I don't need to be doing that especially if I'm trying to do something that I know I want to do like I could be very excited to start something and then all of a sudden I'm like guess what this is actually going to go completely wrong and horrible and you're going to suck and everybody's going to hate you and you're going to hate yourself and nothing's going to work out and I mean, I've definitely gotten better with that. I think I've kind of just like, again, just me being spontaneous with things has helped also. Um, and just kind of doing it just just to get it done and say that I did it. That's kind of like the one thing I feel like I need to just like let go is the the like down talking, you know, all the, all the good things that I'm trying to do with myself, with others, and stopping the whole, like, bad vibes around, you know, when it, when I, when I don't need that, and I know I don't need it, so, like, why do I keep doing it? Am I having, like, self, like, a self-realization <laughs> right now? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and I feel like a lot of people self-sabotage, too. Yeah. Like, like, it's, it's such a common thing, and, and it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, and it's unnecessary, because, like, especially if you're going towards something that you really want to do, like, why would you completely ruin it for yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no point in doing that. There's no point, Carolina. <laughs> there's no point in doing it. Whoa. Okay. My older self to my current self. I guess I tell myself that being lonely doesn't always mean you have to be alone because I felt alone a lot when I was younger like I I would always like I'd have people there you know but I just always felt like in in my own little bubble and world it was like I just I felt lonely because I felt like I couldn't really like express anything to people again this all comes down to like being vulnerable like I was just afraid of showing that like I was sad, I was upset, and I think, I don't want to say it was like my upbringing or like my family, but we were, we even up until now, like we're never super like affectionate or like we don't really share our problems with each other, which like, I mean, I know there's a lot of people like that, like, you know, you're, it, you don't have to be super lovey-dovey with everyone, and that's just kind of like how I grew up. I have my, I have my family, and like... Mm -hmm. But like, I, it's okay to find other families. And I think it's great that I have been able to find another little family. Because when I feel like maybe I don't have, not security, but like when I feel like I can't express what I want with, you know, my blood and flesh, I can come to like my pretend blood and flesh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just going outside. like. Getting out of like my little bubble that is my very comfortable bed um, and just going outside and like just taking a deep breath and just knowing that you're kind of just like one with the world. It's like one of the best feelings ever. Um, I love getting to like go to the beach and just like sit there and like just staring out into the horizon like my brain starts going into these like weird like intellectual like life questioning things and it's like it's great because I feel like I don't get to do that if I'm it, like in the corner of my couch with a blanket and like the remote just like clicking through Netflix you know what I mean um so just getting to like go outside and just like be one with nature but like yeah like actually be with the world for like even just five minutes is great um but another thing I feel like I I'm highly affected by music. 
I'm one of those people that like music affects me to the point where like I my body just like doesn't know what to do with itself when I hear a song that I really like like I'm like oh my <laughs> god like crit like goosebumps everywhere my heart's racing I feel like I'm gonna throw up like I don't know what to do with myself when I find music that makes me feel like that it's like I am reborn like literally I left the body I'm in and just like shifted over like a centimeter and I have been like this I'm like this new person I don't know it's just like interesting to see that like other people aren't affected by music like that because like I'm like how like do you not hear that violin like way in the background <laughs> like for me like I I can't dance without music I can but I don't want to you know what I mean I feel like I, I need that support almost like I feel like music for me has all always been kind of like therapy like when I when I don't want to say what I want to feel like I just put on the saddest song ever and I'm like this is saying everything I need to say I'll play that song on a loop and little do I know like it's helping me just like figure out whatever it is that I'm going through and then I'll never be able to hear that song again because it reminded me of that whole time. <laughs> I feel like music is like the unspoken therapist to that like no like it's just yeah. always there when you need it and music and nature are like the two things that just like ugh. listen to yourself i think there are certain times where like we tell ourselves like oh i'm not feeling okay or i i don't agree with that or i i want to say something but nobody's letting me say anything i think it's important to to listen to your gut and kind of just go with it i think sometimes we feel like our opinions or like our thoughts aren't valid or like not smart enough or like what we're gonna say is not gonna like add up um and sometimes it does but we we don't have like a lot of self-trust because again we've been influenced by so many outside sources to keep your mouth shut like don't say that you shouldn't say that like don't tell me how you feel because it's not benefiting me um, so listen to yourself, listen to your heart. It's important to know who you are, how you feel, what you want to say, when you want to say it, to who you want to say it, even if it's to yourself, you're looking yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm going to have a great day today. Like, listen to that. Cause that honestly could completely change that day, that week that year, like, you never know, so. Yeah. Oh, I love you. I love you.